this morning I'm with uh, Joe Stiglitz here from uh, Columbia University and we're talking about uh, different aspects of uh, the current global economic downturn and what that might mean uh, for China. I'd just like to start a little bit about uh, talking about China and how you're evaluating the Chinese stimulus package that has been introduced recently. Well, uh, what I said in my talk was that uh, uh, you know, the Premier said it was a package and, and, and it has a number of ingredients, a number of uh, objectives. One of uh, uh, clear objectives is to provide immediate stimulus to the economy. Another objective is to provide assistance to those who will be hurt uh, because of the downturn. And the third one is to use the occasion to further the... the uh, transition to the economy that, that one would like to have, mm -hmm. and uh, this has all three of those uh, things that are really focused on immediate stimulus, things that are focused on on helping those that are going to be uh, right. facing uh, difficulties, uh, many things trying to move the economy to restructure it towards where mm -hmm. it wants to go, needs to go. Um, inevitably, there are going to be... Uh, discussions of uh, details of the balance and uh, questions about uh, implementation. Mm -hmm. uh, are you, you know, um, uh, some things are easier to implement, some things are more difficult to implement. Okay, and you spoke about, since you've come to Beijing, you've been here for, I think, uh, about a week now, is that correct? It's China. China, yeah. Okay, and you, you're sensing here a, a sense of confidence that China can um, get out of this situation? Uh, to manage at, the situation. Yeah. And, and, and that uh, um, clearly uh, some aspects have caught everybody by surprise, the magnitude of the downturn, mm -hmm. decrease in sales uh, of exports, um, uh, the uh, factories that have been abandoned. I mean, all of these were things that mm -hmm. have, have, have caught right. everybody by surprise. Uh, but in spite of that, uh, uh, confidence that, that uh, uh, the government uh, has both the resources and the commitment mm -hmm. to make sure that something happens. Okay, but do you think this confidence is well placed? Yes. Uh, I don't think, you know, uh, uh, and I, I think it's, it's well placed for um, uh, because, in a sense, uh, I think that. The forces in the economy for expansion, if you want to think, of it, are very strong and have had to be contained. You know, the government has had to dampen the economy. Even when it was growing at 11 mm -hmm. percent, there were those who, who could, would have pushed it even further. And that has to do with the, 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 the structure of the... Of the uh, um, um, you might say the decision-making processes, the role of the local governments, uh, uh, which uh, uh, contribute to to the uh, um, large number of sources of expansionary pressures. Mm -hmm. um, I think the the concern on some quarters is not today I whether the government today will be able to engage in expansionary successful expansionary efforts the question is tomorrow by tomorrow what I mean is that some of the expansionary efforts are related to uh, uh, supply side actions that might increase the supply of goods, contributing to an imbalance of supply and demand in the future. Mm -hmm. And so it's like recreating a, a new a new 
bubble in a, in a way. Well, a uh, bubble may not be the right word. I wouldn't use the word bubble because that bubble you associate with financial markets. Mm-hmm. But um, I would say a, a, you might say a new set of imbalances that would have to be have to be addressed. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that uh, what I would say is that, that is more the anxiety that that I sense. Uh, uh, than the ability to actually today succeed in in re uh, reinvigorating the economy is it uh, can it do it in a way that uh, is uh, the basis of sustainable expansion? Right. And you mentioned how there's a feeling outside of China that maybe China can help you know resolve the situation that China can fill in and and stick to. Uh, step in and fill the gap, but is that a realistic expectation? That no, and, and, yeah, and the point I made is just the, the size of the Chinese economy. Mm-hmm. A lot of people, uh, but its GDP, well, in particular its consumption, is so much smaller than the United States mm-hmm. that even a very large increase in China's consumption won't make up for the uh, large percentage increase of China's consumption won't make up for the uh, likely decrease in consumption in the U.S. Okay, and you mentioned earlier about the um, household income and how how that needs to be grown. Can you elaborate a little bit more on that and and what might be the steps that might be taken by the government to to, uh, change that situation whereby household expenditure as a percentage of GDP is, as you say, relatively low? Household income. Income. I- income. Uh, yes. Um, you know, the, basically, uh, one way of looking at it is, is retained earnings are very high. Retained earnings are very high. Uh, is the retained earnings are invested, and that's what the engine of the uh, fees, can, the, the supply side mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, response, which is very impressive, and uh, has worked because of the ability to deal with imbalances between supply and demand by uh, exports. Mm -hmm. Uh, The mechanism, basically, there there are two basic mechanisms. You increase wages, you increase distributed profits. Um, And uh, that's hard. Uh, Increasing wages basically can occur mainly through in the context of China right now, competitive pressures. But that means you have to start driving up uh, the demand for labor Mm. relative to the supply. And that means you have to create lots of labor and tanks of productive enterprises. So that's why I was focusing on the creation of small and medium-sized enterprises. But that, as you said, is going to take a a period of time. Do you think the unemployment in the short run might be an issue? Well, well... um, uh, two years ago, the discussion was, would China be able to continue its growth path given that wages were beginning to rise, that demand for labor was outpacing supply? Mm-hmm. Uh, the point is that, that uh, these are very delicate balances, and I think... Assuming that that discussion was right, in which I think there was some evidence that, you know, that there was, a, mm-hmm. uh, that suggests that 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 yes, there is a problem in the right now. Twenty million migrant workers have been let go, but that uh, rekindling the economy, that that in fact uh, just giving a little bit more boost to this uh, labor demand might actually succeed in helping drive up the wages mm-hmm. even more. But the government, you know, the, one has to realize that this is a, going to be a very big change in the way the country functions. That is to say, it will be more of a demand-led growth than a supply-led growth. For extracts of the transcript of this interview and for free access to other review articles on the subject, please go to fear.com.